I'm Nick Coy uh, from Brecken Bailey, and welcome to the Animal Innovation Show. Tell us who you are and how you're innovating and helping animals. Yeah, so we are a fresh dog food company, um, also a dog products company. I'll explain a little bit about how that works as we, we go along. But, um, you know, long story short, one of our dogs started having some severe health issues and we really started looking into, um, you know, how nutrition could positively affect his life and give him more years. And next thing I knew, I was doing a ton of research, talking to a bunch of specialists and consultants, um, ended up working for a, another dog food company as a consultant and didn't love everything that they were doing and thought we could do it better. So I started gathering ideas and doing a ton of research. And, you know, a few years later, we um, jumped full in and now we're making our own dog food. And, you know, every day we're still doing that research, trying to figure out how to make the best possible um, product for all of our furry friends and their furry friends, friends. And um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of where we're at. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. Just a couple of years in, right. You know, now we're producing our own dog food. I mean, I, you guys are really different though. I mean, if people go to your website and check this out, I mean, that doesn't look like dog food. I would eat that stuff. I, I, I'm no expert when it comes to cooking. And I've, I've learned that through cooking dog food for my own dogs for years. And so we hired some, you know, really great chefs who've um, opened up restaurants from Honolulu to New York, and they have their own um, human food business. And they're both dog lovers. And, you know, they manage the recipe creation. And they even do a lot of taste testing to make sure their dogs love it and their friends' dogs love it. And you know, they put a lot of passion into the food and then there's the, the nutrition side and also not an expert in that just have done, you know, my, my Googling and talking to people and I've got my opinions and all that. So we hired a team of nutritionists to, um, help us formulate the, the, you know, the, the correct way to do all of this. And I'm very confident that, you know, we have a very superior dog food to many of those that are out on the market. So I'm very excited to start sharing this with the world. Yeah. No, that's what I think is really cool about you guys. I mean, you have chefs, right? You have human chefs, right? They, to right. your point, they're not just, they're not just, you know, putting ingredients together. I mean, this is, this is something different. It's nutritionally balanced. It meets all the needs. It tastes good. It's, it's fresh. It's healthy. It's, you know, I mean, it's not that dry kibble that you're, you're picking up at the local Walmart. You know, we can do better. We can make small batch. We can really focus on the quality and, um, we've kind of following that, that, that model of the, you know, the, the craft side of things, um, you know, someday we would hope to grow huge and have, you know, millions of customers and whatnot, but we're still very focused right now on, you know, just making sure that quality is, is there for every single dog that we serve and the enjoyment you get out of feeding your dog premium food is, it's amazing to know that you're doing something that, is, is great for the health of, of your dog. And also, you know, just makes them happy too. Like our dogs love feeding time. It's not just some, Oh yeah, we're hungry. We got to eat. You know, our ingredients are things like real chicken, um, you know, spinach, quinoa millet. Um, we use all the, we don't use the, the standard, you know, a lot of fresh food companies settle for things like white rice is their filler. Um, we just don't do that. We're like, we're going to use the best grains that we can possibly find. And so, so right now it's, is it frozen? I mean, it's fresh, it's fresh frozen. Like help me understand how that works, how you get the product from, from your kitchen to, to mine. So, um, so like next week we're shipping out a, a bunch of, of food to our, our early customers. And, um, you know, on Sunday, our cooks are cooking Sunday through Monday and then they're going to freeze it on Tuesday. It will be at our warehouse by Wednesday. And by Thursday, it'll be shipping out to people. Um, next day air, probably arriving Friday or Saturday for, the, for most people. So it's very small batch, quick cooked right from our chefs to your door. I mean, you got to refrigerate it, right? But I mean, you're feeding it to the dog. I mean, you're sending them, what, a week's worth at a time? One thing that we're very aware of and being somebody who's I've tested almost all of our competitors and seen what's good, what's bad. One of the issues is definitely freezer space, especially if you have, you know, a big family or, or whatnot. 
Um, so we have a, a, a process of how we seal our, our food to where it can stay good up to, you know, we tell people eight days in the fridge, but truthfully, we extract all of the oxygen out of that packaging in 14 to 21 days is how long it could last in the fridge, as long as it's not exposed to air. Um, and then in the freezer, it's good for up to about six months. Of course, it's to have a profitable business, but at the end of the day, it's to help as many dogs be healthy as possible. Um, so we'll work with anybody on, you know, if it's their dogs are getting 10% portions or whatever, we'll, we'll make it work. So people can have some fresh food, um, in their dog's life. And I love that because it's not that you got to feed the dog hundred percent. This, like you said, you've got different things. So it's, a 50%, a 25%. So it's, it can also be a supplement where the dog is getting those fresh ingredients, good taste, but you're balancing it out, like you said, because it is expensive from a cost perspective. Um, so our perspective is do what you can. If, if you can feed some fresh and help, um, you know, your dog in, in that way, let's, let's find a way to do it. And, you know, one of the things I want to make sure to point out too, I mean, you guys are really unique. You really want to give back to rescues and shelters and, and help. And that's something, you know, that I'm very passionate about. So why don't, why don't you tell people about how that works? We have a variety of ways that we give back. So the, the first way that we give back is we're partnering with um, shelters and rescues all over the country. And then just a lot of other people that do other things for dogs, like transport or, or whatnot, any way that we can find um, a way to partner with them that is good for everybody, we're going to do it. So the, the first way that we do is when somebody adopts a dog out from a shelter or rescue, we, and they end up buying our food, we give the shelter, um, you know, anywhere from like 15 to $30 one time, which is very common in our industry for pet food companies to say, Hey, here's your finder's fee essentially. Um, but what we do on top of that is we give a percentage of those sales up to 3% every single shipment. So if, you know, Fido is getting a shipment every three and a half weeks, every time that that subscription renews, we're dropping 3% back into the account for those shelters reciprocal for everybody involved. We're all getting the benefit and we're all helping dogs at the end of the day. And that's, that's what's important. No, and I love that. I think that's really clever. And you're, like you said, you're really just trying to help them. I mean, it, of course, you got to have a, a company that makes money in order to stay in business, pay your employees and keep producing food. But you recognize the, the bond that people have with their animals and you're trying to help the shelters and rescues that are working hard to save these animals. So I thank you for doing that. I think that's, that's amazing. What I'm trying to tell all of our employees, investors, our rescues, everyone we talk to is, we can't give unless we receive. So we have to become comfortable with making money. Um, you know, a lot of people look at it as, you know, you're selfish because you want to make a profit and these things, and you should just do everything to give back. Our way of looking at it is the more money that I make, the more good that I can do. Um, so the goal of this company is really to give back to the, the dogs that have, you know, done so much for us. I wouldn't be the person I, I am if it wasn't for my dogs. No, and I think that's really cool. And I'm excited to see, you know, where this is going to go. But, uh, but I'm curious, I mean, take us back to the point. I mean, you said you were working for a pet food company before, but you know, you must have had an idea one day and you just said, I can, I can do this better. I can make a company and a, and a food that's sure. going to make my dogs healthier. Take us back to that point when you had the idea to do this. For years, I was, you know, I've been in startups before I was a marketing director for a tech company. So I've always been looking for that passion project where I can just put everything into it. And then when our dog Tulo got sick, um, it just kind of all came together. So I started looking into all the different dog foods and everything that, that looked good. And I found a, in, in through that process, I wanted to start my own dog food company that was going to make the best possible dog food out there. And then I realized how hard that was. Um, so I, I, I tried to partner and work with another dog food company to, to launch here in the Denver area. Um, their funding kind of fell apart and that sort of crashed and sort of broke my heart for a little bit. And some other employees that were there, we just kind of were like, shucks, we thought we were really going to you know get out there and get some fresh food out, out there. Um, so I, over the next two years, I probably spent 20% of my time just doing research and putting everything together. And then once we got the investors in place, 
um, we just went for it. And, you know, just seeing the, the positive changes are kind of what rolled into the, the creation of this company. And what's really cool is, you know, you get to meet people like you and our investors, everybody that we're working with has the same passion that we do. So that's, that's kind of where we're going. Yeah, I love that. I love the fact that you've got a vision for where, where this is going. And, you know, you've got a way that you want to run your company. So it's it's not a profit first. It's no, this is the kind of company we want. This is the impact we want to have on the world. And yeah, we'll hopefully make money at the same time. Very cool. So now, of course, I know it's for dogs, but I got to ask for all us cat lovers out there. I mean, is that somewhere in the future as well? Is there going to be a cat version of this? I would say it'll come for sure. Um what, what I need is I need somebody with, that has my passion for dogs. I need, I need a, another co-founder to come in that has that passion for cats and I want to do it the right way. Um, so I think at some point we will expand into that, but for now, um, it's just going to be dogs probably for the first year or two. If we're going to do the cat portion, we're going to do it right. And we're going to take our time with it. I mean, it's been a journey so far and you got a long way to go, but I'm curious, what have you learned about yourself in this process so far? Not to give up. I mean, you know, there's so many days as a startup entrepreneur that you, you have to do things that you don't know how to do all the time. Yeah, that's that's been something that's been tough. Like nothing great is easy. And if if you want to accomplish something, you got to put your head down and just do it. You know, work super hard when we're not getting paid. Like I'm probably not going to collect a paycheck for three years. Um, and that's hard for, for me. It's hard for my wife. It's, um, you know, but knowing that the, the big picture is something that's bigger than just us. Um, yeah, that's, that's a cool thing. Exactly. Exactly. So Nick, I mean, if people are interested, where can they go? How can they sign up? How do they learn more? Um, you can contact us anytime at bark at breckenbailey.com. Um, if you need customizations, one thing that we're doing, that's a little bit different on that front is we're, um, we have a puppy, a fresh puppy recipe. Nick, this is really cool. I'm excited for you guys to, to launch and, and just really get going on the journey. And hey, I look forward to what we're going to do together. And I definitely appreciate the way that you're approaching this and, and wanting to pay it forward and give back and, and help. So thank you for doing that. And as, as we wrap things up, we'll remind our viewers and listeners that you know if you've got an inspirational idea and, and a mission for your company like Nick does, and you want to talk about a product, a service, or even just an idea that you've got for how it's going to help people and help animals, we want to know about it. Get them on the show. So just go to innovations.show and fill it out the form and we'll get you on and talk about it. So thank you again, Nick. Look forward to see where you're going and really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks, Chris. And thanks for what you do.